So, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, but I was cycling today all day long and pretty efficiently. And during the first 40 kilometers or so, I was in mild to severe stomach pain. And I was really pushing it through in the most ridiculous David Goggins fashion. You know, like, they don't know me, son. They don't know me, son. Who's gonna carry the boats and the logs? Something like that. And then eventually I just felt that I really need to pull over and I just ran to the bushes nearby and I took the most disgusting, disgraceful turd I remember in my recent memory. Recent memory. Other than the salmonellosis that I had like three or four weeks ago. But I would like to skip that chapter altogether. All these days, like last 48 hours, I kind of felt like there are like two devils dancing inside of my guts and causing me all this pain, you know. And with this massive disgusting turd, devil left my body and now I'm feeling relieved and so much better. I mean, I'm still in slight pain occasionally, but it's bearable, it's okay, you know. Eastern Europe, wherever. Anyway, I found myself very close to Paraguayan border. In fact, they are covered roughly 140 kilometers already and I still got uh, like 10 to go to the next town. My last stopover in Argentina, which is which is this little town called Laguna Blanca. And the town itself is really not interesting to me, but right next to the town there is this um, national park, Parque Nacional de Pilcomayo, which I would love to see at least for a brief time and then go to Asuncion. I mean, everything depends on my health. If I will end up in this miserable situation of uh, gut pain again, I'll go to Asuncion straight away. But, you know, I really don't want to miss this opportunity. We will see. Hopefully I will overcome. Hopefully my gut will overcome and no more dancing devils in my belly again, at least for some weeks to come. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. So, uh, many things happened to me over the last 36 hours. I managed to successfully reach the town of uh, Laguna Blanca. But by the time I reached the town, I was really, really exhausted. Yeah, all these stomach issues, together with many, many, many 150 kilometers or so of cycling, got me really exhausted. So I went straight to the first hotel I could find and I slept like a baby. And also, I met some family, actually Argentine-Mexican family that lives in Laguna Blanca. And they invited me for a dinner on the next day, so I went and I had a really good dinner. Really cool people. There are some really cool people in Argentina and Formosa. So, you know, you should never underestimate South American hospitality. Then they introduced me to some cyclists of the area, so just cycling around with some middle-aged dudes. Also cool people. And then they brought me to this place, where I wanted to go, Parque Nacional de Pilcomayo, Pilcomayo National Park, arguably the most famous protected area of Formosa province, one of the last spots in Argentina with well-preserved Chaco Humedo, wet Gran Chaco habitat. So I came up with this plan. I really want to go to Paraguay. The Paraguay is nearby, it's like 60 kilometers away. I'm kind of anxious to get to Paraguay, I really want to get to Asuncion and move to another country. I don't know why, another gut feeling I guess. But I want to explore this park at least a little bit. There is 
there is a, like this shady, sketchy little road that goes across entire national park. So I'm planning to cycle across across the national park through the night, like starting from now. Now it's like around eight o'clock, so I think it will take me like two, three, four hours. I don't know, and then pitch my tent in there and sleep in there and then wake up very very early sleep maybe four hours or so and then wake up Jesus mosquitoes and cycle back very early morning why so well I want to see some snakes and reptiles and most of them are active at night so if there will be any they will pop out at night so I'm hitting the road now and early morning hours are the best hours to see birds and mammals like some iconic mammals can be found supposedly can be found in this national park some of the few jaguars that live in argentina are actually to be found in this national park and also howling monkeys that i heard already and stuff like that so yeah i want to approach my last 24 hours in argentina with a bank and then hit the road to paraguay tomorrow let's do this Mosquitoes, mosquitoes in here are just vicious. Like they're just omnipresent. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm an omnipresence of mosquitoes. I'm just feeding them all over the place, left and right. Come, come and get me. Get some of that Eastern European blood of mine. Come on. seen some stuff not much but some and uh, I must confess that this is not a camping spot but uh, if you live outside the law you must be honest Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, I find myself at the border of uh, at the Argentinian Paraguayan border. It's one of those sketchy uh, Latin American borders and to be frank I'm quite clueless where exactly I need to go, I need to figure this out. And I think it's not the best idea perhaps to flash time with my fancy camera. It's a bit cloud, it's not so super hot anymore. And I stepped over, I pulled over in some nice gas station and I ate a lot of chocolate and I drank a lot of water so I'm rehydrated and happy. I'm a happy gringo. This is not too long. Hopefully this won't last too long. I really want this to be smooth. I'm really looking forward to reach Asuncion and take a shower. I already booked some hostel. There weren't too many options to be honest because they say that uh, uh, Paraguay was hit real hard by COVID pand pandemia 
and uh, most of the touristic business businesses backpacking businesses had to they were closed and uh, only a few remains so I picked probably the leftovers of, of what used to be tourism in Asuncion that little tourism that they had because uh, Paraguay is not considered to be an overall touristy country I really don't have much food left, so I need to finish my leftovers from Argentina. So I decided to eat this really nice meal, traditional backpackers meal, it's called bread and water. So we need some bread and eat some water, any type of water, drinkable water and some bread. Water like Villa, Villa, Villa Vivencia. Vigia Vivencia, please sponsor me one day. And to sketch bread, I wanna be, uh, I wanna get sponsors from this bread. So what you do is you take a piece of bread, like this, yeah? And you put it in your mouth. And it's kind of, you feel it's a little bit dry, you know? So you take some of this water, And you mix it in your mouth. Hmm? Really good, really good. We need to mix it. You know? That's that's the key. Hmm. Hmm. That's some good shit. It's good for the kids. It's good for the kids and it's good for the kidneys. <laughs> Eventually I managed to reach Asuncion, the capital of Paraguay. Asuncion met me with really, really stormy weather. And all this time, as I was cycling through northern Argentina, I was told that there was a constant lack of uh, rain, it's very dry for this time of the year, like extraordinary dry. And, uh, yep, on my first day of Paraguay, we're about to get a storm, like a massive one, so... Uh, <laughs> Life is full of wonders, I guess. <laughs> I'm really dirty and tired, and uh, ah. so I really want to just go to my hostel and uh, take a shower and eat something decent. Oh, it's been a rough. Like last week, it was pretty rough. Uh, I need to admit. No, unless I'm happy, you know. That is beautiful. Occasionally. Sketchy but beautiful. 